How do you face that competition from China? I think the best thing we can do is actually to continue to you know, invest in the electric uh, platform, the electric technology, invest in the plants and the gigafactory. That's what we're doing at Renault. This is why also we are you know, planning to create what we call Ampere, which is a pure EV unit, uh, because I think electric cars uh, is a different sport from the traditional one we did. Some analysts do say that Chinese competitors have a, such a huge cost advantage that you can't just bridge the gap. Um, what are your plans to actually convince them that this is not right? I mean, that's. I mean, we. You know, people like us, they cannot speculate on the, in the fu on the future. They have to do it every every day. So I think that one of the commitment we are taking with Ampere is actually to slash the cost by 40 percent, generation on generation. And this is about a lot of investment in technology, in development, in the manufacturing techniques. We think we have the argument and the competence to do it. It will take some time because uh, Chinese uh, OEMs, they started a generation before uh, the Europeans because market conditions were different in China. So that's the fight uh, and we are ready to engage. Um, you're also planning on IPOing Ampere. Um, initially it was planned for this year, now it's pushed to the next year. Why the delay and how, is, how are the plans uh, going? I think there is an internal uh, question and uh, also a, a question on the context which was not probably not completely favorable as you you might imagine but practically we had to carve out the uh, combustion engine unit called horse and we did that in July so now by November we will carve out first internally the EV part and then we'll have to prepare all the things for next year potentially the IPO so it's uh, you got to do the things in the right order because it's a complex uh, organization in restructuring I would say uh, Let's zoom out again a little bit and go more macro. So the macro environment is also uh, posing some headwinds um, for mass production. Um, how do you see that in terms of keeping up your pricing policy? But look, I think that uh, there's for sure pressure. We already see it in a way uh, because, you know, production is coming back. Everybody is fighting for market share. What happened so far for Renault is that we went back to second position in Europe as a brand. Uh, so we're getting market share. We're protecting our, our pricing so far. And w the good thing for us is that we will be launching 22 cars from now to 2025, uh, 2025 beginning of 2026. So we count on the fact that, that the wave of new products will help us to protect this. So we might be anti-cyclical because of the product cycle. Um, you're referring to that you still can maintain your pricing power. Competitors such as Tesla have slashed their prices. So is that something you can envision as well to go into the rebate uh, or to, to offer rebates um, in order to keep the volumes up? But look, the thing, the thing is a, a, a brand like Tesla or Pure EV, when they slash prices, they do it on 100% of the cars. If we do it, we only do it on 10, 15% because on the, other, on the other side we sell combustion engine cars. So... I think that traditional OEMs also have somehow this advantage, but for sure, uh, the, you know, the, the pricing of uh, EV cars has to go down to get, to get into the volume, and this is the fight, but you would only do it in the moment you are able to reduce the cost of it. So I'm not ready to compromise completely the profitability of EVs because we have to think at two, three generations, we cannot kill the business right from the, the, the beginning. So uh, that's the battle we are in. It's not easy. We have a lot of pressure. The content it's complicated, but you know, uh, three years ago, and nobody would have counted on the fact that Renault would do you know some of the best results in in its history. We have been fighting uh, so far, so good, and we will keep fighting. Uh, let's talk as well a little bit about what you bring to that this year's car show, because obviously you are here to produce pr uh, present something new. So what is it? Uh, we actually bring a new generation of Cynic. It's a pure EV car. Uh, this is a very important nameplate for Renault because we sold in the history five million cars. There are still two million and a half uh, around, uh, so it's a very important product. And as originally it was the case, what we are trying to bring with this car is an EV that anybody can buy or will want to buy because it's actually ticking a lot of boxes. Compact package, typically European for meter 40, for meter 50, more than 600 kilometer range, uh, you know, big trunk, uh, a lot of uh, you know functionality for families, for company cars, etc., etc. So I think that. This is one of the cars that will help European consumer to switch to EV in the mass market, not uh, you know beyond the first phase of early adopter. So it's a very strategic product for Renault, but also for the market.